Hello, this is Danny Naylor with the Institute of Real Estate Education. I wanted to see if we can do in 10 minutes a quick summary of the changes to the Utah Association of Realtors uh, new forms that they've implemented to comply with uh, the NAR uh, settlement that's happening. And those are implemented, I think, today. Today's August 14th. Um, so I just wanted to go over them real briefly, uh, hopefully a 10 minute overview so you can kind of see it in a nutshell. And then maybe we'll do another video where we cover more of the um, uh, potential uh, complications that might come up with the different ways we do things now that are different than they used to be. Okay, So if you remember, the, la the three main points of the uh, lawsuit were that we, let's see, cannot advertise BAC on the MLS, the buyer agent can't accept any more payment than their buyer agency agreement, and we must have an agreement before we do any home tours, okay? So that's kind of the short version of the uh, changes. So now let's look at the forms real quick and see what they changed. So uh, the UAR, and these are proprietary forms, by the way, if you're a member of Utah Association of Realtors, you can uh, log into one of their affiliated MLSs and get a copy of them or get them straight from UAR. Um, designed, they've done a lot of work on these and we really appreciate what they've done to uh, kind of help all of us uh, working in the industry to do things the right way and take care of our clients the best way we can. So first change I'm looking at is the exclusive right to sell listing agreement and agency disclosure. Um, one tiny change they made is they clarified at the top that the uh, date at the top is when the agreement ends. <laughs> I've seen some confusion about people putting a start date in there instead of an end date. Um, the next little change they did is um, they clarified that the commission here is based on a uh, gross acquisition price. So not net, it says gross in the agreement now. If you want to do a commission based on net, you totally can. Just do an addendum and clarify that or change it, change the section. But the current agreement now says gross acquisition price for the uh, seller's brokerage fee. Now one big change here based on these new changes is that now this portion up here is only what the seller's brokerage will get. It is not what is being shared with the buyer's brokerage. Okay, It used to be on the old form that up here you would put the total amount that might be shared between the two, but now you only put the amount that the seller agent would receive. Okay, And then this new section down here, 2.2, gives the option to put in how much you would offer to a buyer agent if they brought a buyer here. So we can't advertise buyer agent commission offers on the multiple listing services, but we can still offer those to other agents and we can still pay those. Okay. But the way you do that now is you put a separate amount down here. So where maybe in the past you might've done like say 5% that you would split between a seller agent and a buyer agent. Um, now, instead of putting 5% in the top here, you would just put the part that the seller agent would get under that split. So maybe two and a half if you were doing it half and half. And then the other two and a half would appear down in this 2.2 section. Okay. Now this here is not a full agreement to pay that necessarily. Um, it used to be with the multiple listing service that the a uh, agents had all agreed already that if there was something in this contract, then it would be paid. But now, uh, since we don't have the ability to put those in the multiple listing service, uh, now this uh, authorization to offer compensation is just an authorization from the seller to their a listing broker to offer compensation, but it doesn't necessarily create an agreement between the two brokerages. So that's kind of the change that we've made here um, to comply with the settlement. Okay. Um, we also say here this section in 2.3, we clarify that this does, uh, it can uh, fulfill the compensation that the buyer. Uh, agent is willing to receive. It also says here the company may not agree to a compensation agreement that exceeds the authorized amount in section 2.2, right? So this is the maximum that the seller's broker can offer to the other side. But again, this is just an offer now. It's not a full agreement to pay that to a buyer broker. Now you'd have to have a separate broker payment uh, agreement between the brokerages because we don't have that multiple listing service agreement where we had already agreed. Okay, So that's kind of the big change is you can still offer the compensation, but now you have to create an agreement per transaction to make that happen. Okay, A couple of other little uh, changes I noticed on this form from previous versions. Some of these might have been in there recently. One is that the warranties, the seller warranties now specifies that they will use the UAR seller property condition disclosure, not just any 
property condition disclosure, and I noticed that they added a shall or may to the dispute resolution section of this agreement, and they also added a section that says that the seller of this agreement uh, will not enter any class action against the company here. Okay, So that's kind of an interesting addition that we did, kind of a legal protection for agents. And this is just another, says that the UAR seller property condition disclosure will be included. Okay, So those are kind of all the changes I found in the most recent form. So the big changes here are that uh, we used to, so we've got the gross acquisition price is clarified to be gross. We've got the um, seller agent commission and the buyer agent commission separated into two sections of this contract. And we no longer have the multiple listing service as a agreement already in place to share commissions, okay? Now, if you have a listing in place, if you're starting a new listing, you would use today, you would use this new agreement. If you start a new listing, use the new agreement. If you have an existing listing and it's already under contract for sale, then you don't really need to change anything. The previous terms with the commission offer in the multiple listing service would still be effect because they were in effect when it went under contract and that'll be fine. But if you have a listing agreement right now that is not under contract, then you need to addend it now with some of this new language. So they now have this addendum to the exclusive right to sell listing agreement that sort of adds some of the same language. So it clarifies the same thing where it says, here's the amount the seller agent will receive and here's a separate amount that the, they will offer to a buyer agent, okay? They separate that out to make it compliant. So any listing agreement you already have, you need to sign this addendum now with your seller to uh, be compliant, okay? You can find all these in the forms libraries from UAR in the multiple listing services here, okay? Now the buyer broker agreement is a little bit similar, okay? Now the buyer broker agreement, um, there's remember the another uh, requirement that we have is that we have to have an agreement in place before we show properties. And so one thing that we've added here is the uh, ability to be more specific about which properties you show and which um, uh, properties apply to this agency agreement. Okay. Now there's some question about should I sign an agency agreement with someone if I'm just showing them the first property if they only wanted to see one house or should I just sign a showing agreement? And there's a uh, different uh, good or bad reasons to do one or the other. The Utah Association of Realtors did not create a separate showing agreement, um, but some of the multiple listing services have, so you can look at what they have for that, uh, those options. But the UAR uh, buyer broker agreement now gives the option to say that this agreement only applies to properties at a specific address, okay? That's what uh, this second checkbox here under 1.2 says. Um, they also clarified up here, I think I mentioned on the other one, that this is an end date for the contract. So you could do like a one day agreement, you could do a one week agreement on this agency agreement. If you were only going to show a couple properties and the uh, buyer didn't want to commit to a long term uh, agency agreement yet, you could do that. Um, but I think it's good that you, um, before you show a property, there's a lot of potential liability when showing a property, like if the property's damaged or if something gets left unlocked or if something gets stolen or something. It's nice to have a, a complete agreement with the buyer agent who is showing the property so that they have some uh, understanding of what they're gonna do for that buyer and so that they've vetted that buyer to know who they're bringing into the home. So. Uh, it could be a really good thing to have an agency agreement before we do any showings to kind of protect property and protect people. Uh, and so that's something that might be a good thing that comes out of this uh, settlement, okay? There's also another checkbox here. Well, this sentence here says, unless checked below, the buyer warrants that they have not entered into a representation agreement with another brokerage and has no obligation to pay compensation to any other company arising out of the acquisition of the property identified in section 1.2, okay? So we always have sort of had an obligation to make sure that agents don't have another agreement, another buyer agency agreement with someone else so that we don't accidentally put them under two contracts to pay commission twice. This says exactly that, that the buyer warrants, they promise that they don't have another agency agreement in place, okay? So you need to make sure your buyers understand that and understand what they're signing. But if they do, say they did sign a specific agreement for certain properties, and then later they come to you and want to sign for more properties or for a general agreement, then you can list here in this second checkbox right down here, any properties where they already have another agreement so that you can still have an agency agreement with them for new properties they look at 
and exclude anybody that they had an agreement with on other specific properties, okay? That's sort of trying to cover that situation. Now down here in the brokerage fee section, now we see, again, the op here it says that it's the gross acquisition price, okay, not net. Now you can do net, just do an addendum if you wanna do that, but gross acquisition price is the default in the contract. Um, and then it does say here that if you sign a broker payment addendum with another broker, that that would satisfy this uh, amount that the buyer owes you. Um, it also says in bold letters, the broker's fees are fully negotiable. <laughs> we want our clients to understand that. Um, the protection period has also changed a little bit, okay? It used to be that if you had shown a property under an agency agreement and your agency expired and say you put three months in here, then for three months, if somebody bought a property that you had shown them, then you would have some ability to still collect a commission on that. And now that's sort of not the case. If they, here it says, unless the buyer is obligated to pay a brokerage fee on such acquisition to another brokerage based on another buyer broker agreement. So that means the protection period only applies if they don't start working with another agent. So if your agreement expires and they go to buy the house without you, but without any agent, that's where the protection period would still give you room to uh, collect a commission. But if they sign a buyer broker agreement with another agent, then that's it. Then they have a new agreement, your protection period's done, and uh, they can go ahead and continue a new transaction with their new representation, which makes it very clear and helpful um, it's not, uh, it makes it so that when you do your work with a buyer, you want to make sure you uh, carry them to the end if you can. Um, but it uh, makes it very clear who they're representing and who they have an agreement with. Um, they also added the shall or may dispute resolution here, and they also added the sentence about the buyer cannot enter a class action against the company. So those are in there, okay? Those are kind of all the changes to the buyer agreement. Now, similarly with this buyer agreement, if you have a buyer agreement with somebody from the past and you're under contract for a property, you don't really need to make any changes right now. You can just continue the contract and you should get paid normally. Um, but if you have a buyer agency agreement that you signed previously that you don't have an under contract with, a purchase contract, then you should addend it now as of today with this addendum. And it basically just adds the legal language that complies with the uh, settlement. So for example, it says the company may not accept total compensation from any source that is greater than the brokerage fee, okay? So for example, that was in this original agreement here, that language is in here as well. Um, but that means that uh, if you, for example, agree to say a uh, 2% commission from your client and a seller offers like 4% to a buyer broker, you're not allowed to accept any more than the 2%. And remember when we looked at the seller agreement, it said that this was an offer, it wasn't a full agreement to pay. And that's because of the, the distinction between the buyer agent contract and the seller agent contract, right? One is an offer of what you can pay and the buyer broker is what you've agreed to actually be paid. So they're trying to make sure that that works together, okay? so. Uh, if you're signing a new buyer broker agreement today, you would use this new form. Starting today, just use this new form. Your old ones, you should addend with the new language here, unless you're under contract, in which case you're good to just move forward as you were. You hopefully have printed out or made record of the uh, buyer agent commission that was offered on the multiple listing service for anything that was already under contract to make sure that you have that record and follow that through, okay? So now, uh, if you did want to have a broker to broker compensation, you sign this buyer broker agreement for a certain amount and the seller has offered a certain amount, that's not a contract yet because the multiple listing service doesn't make that an agreement anymore. So if you wanna get paid from the seller brokerage, now you need to use the real, uh, real estate brokerage payment uh, excuse me, the real estate brokerage compensation agreement. <laughs> so this is just an agreement from broker to broker, seller broker to buyer broker, which says we agree to pay this much of the gross acquisition price to the buyer broker for bringing a buyer to this property, okay? So this is what you have to sign now instead of counting on the multiple listing service to already agree on the compensation. So. Uh, so a uh, seller brokerage, a lot of times, well, I've heard people saying that seller brokerages are now asking buyer brokerages if they can see their buyer broker agreement to see how much compensation that they've signed for. And frankly, you don't have to show them that. 
uh, the agreement between the buyer and the buyer agent is their property. It's their information. They don't have to share that agreement with the seller. But in that agreement, it does say that they're not allowed to accept any higher compensation. So the buyer broker, when they're signing this real estate brokerage compensation agreement with the seller's brokerage, legally cannot, because of their agreement with their buyer, they cannot write this contract for any more than what their buyer agency agreement says, even if the seller was originally offering a higher compensation amount. Okay. So that's how it has to be done now. So if you are getting paid broker to broker, then on every new contract, every new accepted real estate purchase contract, you need to get this real estate brokerage compensation agreement signed between the two brokerages. So make sure you answer your phones and make sure that you have clear communication so that this can be handled correctly. Now remember there was a third way you could accept compensation and that is if the seller pays the buyer's broker directly, not through the seller's brokerage. Okay, And to do that, you would put it right in the real estate purchase contract. So here, there's a new addendum to the real estate purchase contract. Now they are working on updating the real estate purchase contract, the REPSI language itself, with the state on the approved form. And that's kind of in process. We don't know how that'll turn out, but hopefully it'll come out with language that'll work for everybody. But in the meantime, the Utah Association of Realtors has their own uh, addendum for the real estate purchase contract that basically just says that the seller agrees to pay this amount of the purchase price to the buyer's brokerage. Okay, that's the seller paying that directly. Now, one thing to note though, is that this says that this payment shall be made in addition to any other compensation agreement by the seller's brokerage to the buyer's brokerage. So if you have a real estate brokerage compensation agreement signed, say for 1%, and let's say that your buyer agency agreement says that you should get 2.5%, but the seller is only offering 1%, there's another 1.5% there that the buyer will have to pay directly, or you can potentially ask for that from the seller. And you do that with this uh, addendum to the real estate purchase contract. And you would say, this says in addition. So if you're getting 1% already from the broker to broker agreement, then in here you would just put 1.5% for a total of 2.5% that the buyer agent will be getting uh, in the transaction. And that's assuming that you already had a buyer broker agreement here that said two and a half percent, say. Okay. So those are the three ways that you can get paid. You can either get paid directly from the buyer with your buyer broker agreement. You can get paid from the seller directly with an addendum to the real estate purchase contract, the REPSI, or you can get a broker to broker compensation agreement signed between the two. Okay. So that's kind of the summary of the new UAR forms helping to address this issue with the uh, NAR settlement. So. Um, next, we'll look at maybe doing one more video where we'll go through some of Q&A about what situations might arise and what a real estate agent maybe ought to do with kind of the nuances between these three uh, ways to pay and these changes based on the settlement. So thanks for joining me and we'll hope to see you soon.